Yes, yes. Welcome in. It's Balloon Party 101 ESPN, driven by Monganass, St. Louis Acura, Monganass, Burkhardt, Alton, Toyota, Timothy Michael McKernan, Jackson Burkett. This show has always been a more visual show, I feel like. Yeah. And it's a 28-month run. But today, if you're not watching us, you're only cheating yourself because... Jackson and I are hot, mm -hmm. but today we are even hotter. Uh, I have a sales meeting following today's award-winning presentation of Balloon Party, and Jackson is hosting the TMA Facebook Fan Page Club Championship Bracket Reveal Party at 11.30 on YouTube, both of equal importance, and I'm wearing a sport coat, no tie, Jackson is wearing, uh, are you wearing a full suit or is that a sport coat with a tie? I can't see so, below the council sure. as much as I look forward to during the commercial break. As I can imagine you are. Uh, so technically this isn't a suit. The pants are very close in color. Oh, the, that's an old Jack, money move. That's right. That's right. Uh, and Saw also that at uh, Vianney Prom. <laughs> it's, uh, it's very close, so I can call it a suit. It's not exactly the same color. This sport coat is the same one I had in high school, uh, which is you know nice to fit in when I was a sinewy 155. 155. Now 176, I think, is last yeah, time I checked. 175, stats. right in that area. Uh, so nice to see that still fits. Uh, but these pants were for from when I was a little bit bulkier. And uh, they do not really fit. My belt is doing a lot of work right now. Oh, is that right? Yeah. So we kind of have a nice juxtaposition there where, you know, kind of a smaller coat, bigger pant. And I prefer a smaller pant, bigger coat. How know? do you feel about the Pat Riley-like hair you've got going on today? It's actually a miracle that I'm dressed how I am because I got a really late start today. Like I was... What's I, going on? You were watching uh, post-game coverage of the Blues and Blackhawks last night. Jordan Cairo, your number one star. No, I kind of toss and turn a little last night. Just and that's because you're like, okay, they're only three points back, but they only have three left. Can, can somehow Vegas continue to lose and the Blues continue to win? I think it was the game in hand that really kept me awake. Um, I couldn't just stop thinking. I was like, man, if only they didn't have that game in hand. Hmm. But alas... It was actually thanks to you that I awoke, and and it was because my alarms didn't go off for whatever reason. I don't oh know how that my works. goodness! We could have had the late start today. Because I realized, you text me around six ten, yeah, and that text actually woke me up. Wow! So if you had not texted me, I don't know what time I would have arisen. Let me look at this text exchange here. It was what like did I send a text in? Six eleven. Okay, and that's what woke you up. That is what, I, for whatever reason, my. And this was because you were thinking about. The Golden Knights game in hand? Yeah, I couldn't get. I just couldn't get over. I just toss and turn. Just couldn't get right into the sleep pocket because this game in hand. I was like, you win against the Blackhawks five to two. How do you do? And still, you know, you're on the outside looking in. Uh, Bach Hog says suspenders for the win. Is that? I know we're in suspenders. First of all, you never wear suspenders and a belt. That would make no sense. Um, I just felt like right there, it was kind of like your Ledoux etiquette class came shining through. Well, I see it sometimes. I see people out there wearing, like, suspenders. Oh, hey, I could tell you were about to say, I see people in South County. I saw that. Uh, many counties, probably not, you know, Central Corridor, but many counties across uh, this, this great elitism union. Elitism makes me ill. I just, I see it sometimes. Suspenders is a cool look. Shout out to Sandy Lyle on day one of the Masters. Not playing this year. Yeah. Regardless, suspenders probably nonetheless. He, uh, you know, you, I see people in suspenders and then they put a belt on as well. And mm -hmm. it, the suspenders are supposed to keep your pants up. Why would you both wear a belt and suspenders? It makes no sense. Uh, so for the record, uh, to Bach Hog, uh, Jackson is not wearing suspenders as well. Uh, today is the day Tim wins custody of Jackson. That's Eric Nickens. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we're having a divorce hearing today and that is why uh, we're all dressed up for a court hearing. <laughs> that's, that's what's going on. You're adapting a 26-year-old man. I am. Yeah. I feel like two children's not enough. I need a third and him to be 20 years older than my oldest son. That's yeah. what I'm going for. My yeah. wife is is all for it. Uh, you know what? Since we started TMA at 7 o'clock, we have two pieces of, uh, of news of note. O.J. Simpson mm -hmm. has passed away at the age of 76. Uh, I saw that news come across uh, maybe around 945 yep. this morning. O.J. Simpson's family announced via O.J. Simpson's Twitter account uh, that he has passed away from cancer at the age of 76.
six. You were not around for that time right. in American history, which um, a number of programs have documented. Um, specifically, I think the, that day in history with the Bronco chase and all that took place, there was a 30 for 30 on it. I'm trying to remember everything that happened that day. I think it was Arnold Palmer's last U.S. Open. Oh, wow. The New York Rangers, I think, Stanley Cup parade. Mm. Oh, somebody else is going to text in. With the, there was another thing that happened on that day. I can't recall. Maybe the Bulls? This is 94. 94. You know, Jordan would have been maybe so it was the Rockets and Knicks, maybe? Yeah, Rocket. I've been the two Rockets championships, 94 and 95. And, uh, boy, busy time at Madison Square Garden in June 94. And then I recall being the Cardinals. I'm, I'm going to say this confidently. And people now, maybe after I rattled off all the Cardinal postseason series and the exact totals of what took place in those series a few weeks ago, no, now just let's just let's leave the little bald boy be. I let him cook. Uh, the Cardinals were playing the Pirates that night. I don't know. If you can, if, that, if that's, I mean, that'd be impressive. If you what, can. what date was it with the Bronco Chase? You can get this information. I'm sure it's accessible. I was there with some compadres of mine at Bush Stadium. Probably AstroTurf. Season was about to be shut down in a month and a half. And we went back to a friend of mine's house and just watched that. And we're convinced that that would be the night O.J. Simpson would pass away. Not April 11th, 2024, uh, nearly 30 years after the fact. But uh, that is uh, what America was glued to. And Jackson now just frustrated because, of course, the Cardinals were playing the Pirates. June 17th, it, yeah. 1994, uh, the Cardinals lose to the Pirates 7-4. to four. Yeah, and, and I didn't give any scores, but uh, I did give an opponent. And it, at this point, just roll with me. You don't, do, you, do you have to like your broker? No. Would you have a broker that you like and loses money, or would you have a broker that you don't like but makes you money? That's up to you. I'm telling you, I want the guy who's going to make me money, and that's what I'm going to do for you here on this show. Would you like to take a stab? Oh, that was just Jackson. That was bad. Would you like? Oh, to, that, that was truly oh, not intentional. Oh, it's like a Jay Leno monologue. That was truly not intentional. Would you like to take a guess on uh, who took the mound for the Cardinals that night? Well, the 94 Cardinals. What a team. What a time. What a town. Bah. I, I the '94 Cardinals. I mean, I don't even know if I could. I, I like I could name Bob Tewksbury. I feel may have been around then. That's the answer, Bob Tewksbury. No, Five and two exciting. thirds. Again, I didn't say twenty percent return on that play. I said, you know, let's 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 just, just play around with this. It's going to give a high yield if we hit, and Bob Tewksbury uh, hits. I can't give you the Pirates starter, even though the Pirates were, you know, at the tail end of their run. Oh boy, John Weaver went eight innings. Is that right? Yeah. Kept the boys in check. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Greg Mark Jeffries, Whitten. little Elvis. Mark Whitten went two for three. Hard hitting Mark Whitten. Mm -hmm. September 7th, 1983, four mm -hmm. home runs. Uh, I have a, I, I'll tell the story on behalf of my father. I'll be real quick with it on the. Uh, Anytime somebody says I'll be real quick with this story, people, eh. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, just because it's not my story, so I don't want to like. But I'm kind of like, oh, then it must not be that good if you're not going to. Oh, it's good. Okay. Uh, you're right. You're right. That's yeah. A, no need to preface. Uh, yeah, yeah, say, hey, before we go to break, it's right. like, oh, they're going to break. No, 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 no. no For all you know, this might be a seven-hour podcast I'm about to do today. <laughs> so in 94, uh, my parents, my mom took my dad on a, a trip around some bed and breakfast. And if you know my father, not his bag, not a big bed and breakfast guy. A lot of old school where you're like playing around like you're in the old times. Not a my dad was not a fan. They were going to the Telluride Music Festival. And uh, it was right during the OJ stuff. So they got there. Nothing had happened yet. And all these old bread, bed and breakfast don't have TVs or anything because they're all old school. Finally, three or four days later, after several bed and breakfasts, they get to a hotel with a TV. My dad turns on the TV, and there's OJ. And he goes, why do they have OJ in handcuffs? What's going on here? He had missed the entire thing. He had come to, there's no newspapers anywhere. He had come to eventually surface. That just goes to show you bef time before cell phones. He had no idea for three days. The biggest story in the world, completely unknown to my mother and father. My mother is a journalist. Also. Yeah, working at the Post-Dispatch, right? right? at the time, yeah. But they were traveling through a bed and breakfast tour. Yeah, he goes, what is this guy got hand what the guy OJ in handcuffs for? But I'm not a big bed and breakfast guy. Oh. They've kind of, I feel like maybe been phased out because of Airbnb. And yeah, Verbo. like, but people either hotel or Airbnb. Why would you go? Unless you're like looking for the, 
atmosphere. People ask me about Cooperstown, if I've been there and what I thought of it. And I, I feel like I, I don't do a good job of compartmentalizing the experience of my lodging and Ozzy Smith going in in July of 2002, which I was there for, for KMOV, uh, when I was, as everybody probably assumes, if not knows, an Emmy award-winning and Edward R. Morrow award-winning reporter and anchor. I, I hope that doesn't come off as self-indulgent and unnecessary. Truth. Yeah, I mean, we're just, just stating facts. And, you know, there are not a lot of hotels there. Uh, it was in my contract that I was only staying at Ritz-Carlton's, <laughs> and the nearest one was in lower Manhattan, and we couldn't justify the drive. Not in the Finger Lakes. <laughs> And so we had to stay in a bed and breakfast, and I'm like, yeah, I don't know about this whole thing. <laughs> so I'm there with, like, my photographer, uh, and and I recall the lady cooking the breakfast in July of 2002 just had a dense thicket of hair under her arms. <laughs> and it just, it just, for me, and I, you know, to each their own is what I say. I've chosen not to grow hair on my head. She chose to grow it under her arms, mm -hmm. but it's just not who I want cooking my, <laughs> my treats in the morning. And then also what bothers me more than that is I kind of am a keep to myself guy, yeah. especially in the morning. And the last thing I need to do is gather for the, the hairy armpit lady <laughs> And then, like, six strangers at a table while we eat eggs and make small talk. Uh, yeah, that's so. A so, unfortunately, when I think Ozzy Smith going into the Hall of Fame, I don't think of, like, him diving over <laughs> Kurt Ford or making a barehanded play in San Diego or go crazy, folks. I think of the hairy armpits in upstate New York. I can't shake it. I want to shake it. I want to be better than that. I just can't be. I'm not. Yeah, I've been. Yeah, that's that's tough. I've been to that little town in Cooperstown. I've been to that area. You see the Baseball Hall of Fame, and that's about it. That's about all you got. It's not like it's a massive Hall of Fame by any means. So while it's very cool, and obviously for Ozzy's uh, uh, celebration, super awesome, but I can understand being uh, your trip being colored by the hairy armpit lady. Yeah. Did Edgar Renteria hit a game-winning home run against the Cubs the night Ozzie Smith went into the Hall of Fame? Can you check on that? I think you can. Jackson's going to check on that. Uh, while we set the stage for today's edition of Balloon Party, which uh, will feature uh, Augusta National updates through and through, they didn't get balls in the air until 9.30 Central Time because of wet conditions. Tiger Woods, for the record, teeing off, already was scheduled to tee off later this afternoon. I doubt he gets all 18 holes in today because he won't be going off until maybe sometime around 4 o'clock Central would be my guess. Uh, we do have four players who are one under par, Eric Van Royen, Jake Knapp, Taylor Moore, and Danny Willett. Jackson, what just happened over there? So July 28th, 2002, yeah. which is eight years and a day after the Bronco chase, the Cardinals, I'm sorry, a month, uh, June, July, my bad, the Cardinals win 10-9 to 9 over the Chicago Cubs. Did Edgar Renteria have anything to do with it, or am I, am I wrong on that? I don't want to... I don't want to take credit for a win if I didn't call out the exact detail of what transpired. I'm trying to get that information for you, Tim. Jackson's on AOL dial-up right now, and he was in a chat. No, well, I apologize for this. Wait, yes, three-run homer uh, in the bottom of the ninth gave St. Louis Cardinals a 10-9 victory. Was it off of Antonio Alfonseca, and did he have six fingers? God, bless America. Well, the answer to the latter is yes. <laughs> uh, the former, we're waiting for a confirmation. Somehow Jackson's flipping through the Post-Dispatch archive <laughs> as opposed to going to baseball reference to get this information. I am on baseball reference. Right? They, they have like a thousand things. Win probability. Trial. I don't care. Just tell me who pitched. Well, the game's over, so we kind of know what the win I, probability I is at this I'm point. I'm just trying. I'm trying to make my clients money on this show. Yes. Make, yes. Al Antonio. What's the last name? Alfonseca. Nice knowledge. Nice show prep. Ass. Yep. Albert Pujols and Tino Martinez scored. Uh, the delightful Tino Martinez, friend of St. Louis, did an interview with Tino Martinez for KMOV. I'm like, let's get to the bottom of this. Let's figure this out. And you know, the the photographer is putting the lav mics on each one of us because I'm, you know, I went to St. Louis U High. I'm not going to do that. And uh, and we're making small talk. And I said, have you found a favorite restaurant yet? Uh, and he goes, here? <laughs> it's like, no, in Branson. Right. 
And he goes, I don't know. Some place in Clayton, I guess, it's pretty good. And I'm just like, you would have thought I asked him for, you know, his favorite cut of fry. <laughs> he was just here. And he kept referring to the Yankees as we. He right? did. Yeah. He did. It's spring training. And I brought that to his attention. He was a fan. He, just, he didn't enjoy his, his stay in St. No. Louis. Uh, all right. Uh, it's probably like 11 o'clock already. 1020 in St. Louis. Time check brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers. Jackson has prepared what is known as a Little Piddles Thursday Thursday. The throwdown? You nailed it. Oh, all right, that's coming your way here on Balloon Party 101 ESPN. Mungan-ass St. Louis Acura, Mungan-ass Burkhardt, Alton Toyota, presenting sponsor of Balloon Party on 101 ESPN. For those of you who are regular listeners, you may have heard my story on Tuesday about returning uh, to uh, St. Louis from my sister's wedding uh, over the weekend and getting to the airport and getting ready to start the car to return home, and then the car was dead as a doornail. And sure enough, the great Jamie Burkhardt of Munganass St. Louis Acura and Munganass Burkhardt, Alton Toyota. Yeah, his name's on the dealership in Alton. Uh, he's like, well, let me help you out with this situation. Uh, and immediately, uh, my wife's car, battery, uh, taking care of, oil change while I uh, was out there. They're just the best. It's just that's the kind of service they provide. And for our audience, you're going, well, that's because you do spots for them and, and you know, you're one of the biggest celebrities in St. Louis. And I understand all of that, but they're going to treat you that way even if you're not nearly as, as gifted as I am. They're online at stlouisacura.com and altontoyota.com. It's Munganas, St. Louis Acura, Munganas, Burkhardt, Alton Toyota.
Welcome back. It is Bloom Party. This is 101 ESPN. My name is Tim McKernan, and that's Jackson Burkett, and we are both dressed to the nines today. Jackson hosting the TMA. Jay Randolph Jr. Fan Page Club Championship Bracket Reveal at 1130 on YouTube. This is a big gig for you. A lot of people wanted this, and you got the... You got the nod, and I think it was your Cardinal rights holder talk that's been going on so far this season that got you the gig. Uh, first of many wonderful opportunities that I'll yield from some of my work in the last few weeks on the Cardinals. So, nice. yeah, feeling good. Feeling good about the start. Wearing the red tie, sending a message to Cardinal fans with a wink and a nod. I'm on your side. Yeah. I know they lost yesterday, but think of all the great things that happened. <laughs> we'll go to the desert and conquer. That's what we're going to do. Let's have, as Joe Strauss called it, a balloon party. Speaking of which, on today's balloon party, presented to you by Munganas, St. Louis Acura, and Munganas, Burkhardt, Alton, Toyota, uh, Jackson has what he's calling a Thursday throwdown. Jackson, question number one. Sure, Tim. Following the loss yesterday and uh, officially now two weeks into the baseball season, mm. Mm. do you think the Cardinals are possibly hurting Victor Scott's development? Not seeing AAA pitching seems to trouble the young outfielder who came to the season with a lot of hype. Do you think once Newt Bark comes back, they will send down the rookie and are you still high on him for the future? Uh, oh, so many questions. The question is, who plays center field? And I know you're asking, do they put Newt Bar in there? I don't know if they would put him in center field coming off of rib injury. Yeah. No, I, I would not. So personally. Edmund's swinging the bat now, and... I'm curious what they will do if they'll wait till Edmund gets back and then send him down, assuming he doesn't catch fire. Uh, Mason Wynn has been hitting. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's been a bit of an inverse of what people may have thought was going to happen with those two players at the start of the season, considering the way the Wynn performed offensively in his brief stint with the Cardinals at the major league level at the tail end of the 23 season. Um, I do expect that he will be sent down. I don't think he will be sent down for Newt Bar because one of the things that, that's really working for this team right now is their defense, and he certainly is is providing that. Maybe if he were played a different position and you had an op option that wouldn't put Newt Bar's long-term health, as in the 2024 health, at risk, and he wasn't coming off an injury, then yeah, but this is a different set of circumstances. So I think he stays. But then, you know, the counter to that, and I'll argue with myself for you, the counter to that is what's the Cardinals' biggest issue right now? Offense. Yeah, and what's he doing? Well, none of that. Jack squat. Yeah, yeah. Jack squat. Yeah, it's tough because, like you said, like probably if there was no necessity for him, as we saw before Dylan Carlson got hurt, He's probably not going to be on the opening day roster, probably not on the 40 man. He wasn't. Yeah, right. So I think this is a move based on necessity. So when I say something like, do you think it's hurting his development? The answer can be both yes and no. Like, I do not think this is the best thing for Victor Scott at this point in his career. However, you need somebody who could has a high ceiling. I mean, his ceiling is outstanding. Once he gets on base, he is electric. However, he's just not getting on base. So... I think once he sees some AAA pitching more this year, once Newt Barr and Edmund come back from injury and Carlson down the road, I think he will develop into the player we all think he can be. Of course be. you do, because you're auditioning for a gig somewhere. I don't know. What if you want Chip Carey's job, if that's what's going on here? I'd be Something's so bad going at on. that. I'd be so bad at really? that. Really? Yeah. I was watching, I watched the entire broadcast yesterday, and like rainy days like that, kind of early games, or where I think broadcasters... Where there's electricity in the ballpark on a day game in <laughs> April in a cold, rainy condition. That's where broadcasters can really shine. That's where they earn their keep. And I thought Chip and BT were outstanding yesterday. I really, BT is so funny, man. I really enjoy their work on that. So uh, I'm not coming for any of their jobs. I can promise you that. Yeah, you want somebody's gig. I don't know what's going on. I mean, on yesterday, there. I'll, I'll be critical. Yesterday was a game that they should have won. Uh, Victor Scott, and it was what he's been good at is the outfield up until yesterday. Yesterday was where he let him down, the yeah. defense. Yeah, and given it was Scott a rainy with an day. Error, Lynn with an error, two errors, and the Cardinals lose a game. That I mean, how great would you feel if you beat Zach Wheeler and Aaron Nola back to back, and then you get a day off and you head out to the desert? How do you do? Right. Let's go out and get ourselves a libation in Scottsdale, gentlemen. Oh, we've been outstanding. Get a game over 500, feeling good on an off day, a little confidence. Rafael for call used to call it a happy flight. Happy flight. Yeah. Uh, Bryce Harper goes hitless in St. Louis. You know, that's you know how many series against the Phillies you're going to have like that. So the opportunity was there to strike and win three straight series, uh, but. Alas, not the case. Head out to the desert, see what you can do. Um, who's going to be on the bump? Uh, uh, Matt's on Friday. Maybe he can uh, pitch count and go up a little bit, but I understand it.
What do you mean by you understand it? What does that mean at the end right there? I understand keeping them on a pitch count. Oh, I see. I understand. You know, so we got a Steve and Matt's pitch count take right at the end. I just didn't see it coming. I, I think people are like, oh, Steve and Matt's pitching well. Let's, let's try to extend them out. I think when you extend them out is when you see issues. Okay. So I'm with it. Hey, you know what? There's nothing wrong with a surprise take. <laughs> What about guy who has no idea what he's going to talk about before speaking and just talks? That's a shot at the last 20 years of TMA. Yeah. Jackson, do you have another question here on this Little Piddles Thursday throwdown? Uh, I sure do. Let's keep it with uh, the Cardinals. Tim, you are someone who has covered the sport of baseball here in St. Louis for many years. I want to ask an athlete mindset question. Given the brutally long season, it's probably not best to dwell on one game, good or bad. However, the Cardinals and their current situation with multiple players who are struggling, do you think days off like this can weigh on players? How do they stay clear-headed and focus on the windshield instead of the rearview mirror? Uh, I think it actually happens naturally. I really do. I feel like I had this conversation with, with the guys before. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm not making this up. I mean, it, it may sound in some capacity like an exaggeration, but when I first started working in television and I was 23, working at KMOV in 2000, and the Cardinals would lose a game I would was covering in like April and May, I would go down to the clubhouse and I would be upset. <laughs> and... And it was really, I mean, it was, I, remember, I remember working with Doug Vaughn, you know, who's 20 years older than me. And so it was like a Sunday afternoon and they lost in Houston. And he goes, hey, how's it going? I go, I'm not doing really well. <laughs> it's like I need, somebody needs to have an intervention with the new weekend guy. It's so crazy to me because I know you now. Yeah, I know. And like... I don't know. There's either been an evolution or we've made a regression. Uh... And, and he goes, what's wrong? Like, he's like, oh, you know, is, you're dealing with something? I go, well, the car toys lost to the Astros. <laughs> and I'm sure he walked back and said to Steve Savard, like, we got to we gotta find somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> we got an emotional time bomb in the sports <laughs> office. This guy's upset about an April loss to the Astros. And it's one thing if he's like, you know, a fan, but he's covering the team. Yeah, that's and his a... moods are, you know... When they were playing the Diamondbacks in 2001, and I was going live from what was called Bank One Ballpark at the time, and those were some tough losses, and they couldn't wait to pull. At the time, you get called up on a satellite when the window would open, and they couldn't wait to see me after a loss because they knew <laughs> I'd look like I'd been at a funeral. <laughs> Like right before they say go live, you're yeah. wiping. Like, pull it together, boy, pull it together, boy, pull it together, boy, pull it together, boy. And so I would go into these clubhouses. And, and these guys would be, and not to say that they were like, you know, slapping each other with the towel and giggling, right, right. but that, you know, they're like, you know, we're going to win 70 and we're going to lose 70. We already kind of know that going into the year. What are we going to do with the other 22? Right. And that's what's going to determine things. So we're going to be fine. We're going to have 500 at bats. We're going to strike out. It's part of the deal. So I say that to present... It's not necessarily when you play 162 games, you're getting too high with a high or too low with lows. Now, if there is a trend that carries on that it is an outlier, especially a negative one, that can have an effect. If you're a closer and you've blown three saves in a row, if you're somebody like Nolan Arenado and you're not hitting the ball hard, I would imagine that's that's on his mind at this point, even though his average isn't dreadful. He's not hitting the ball like he normally does. I bet that's on his mind. And uh, on the other side of it, I bet Steven Matz is riding a high. Right. Um, considering he's coming back from injury and he's carrying over the momentum that he had before he got hurt last year. He maybe feels like he figured something out. So uh, it's more about the sample size than an individual game, unless there are people going, oh, crap, if I don't get a hit, I'm going down to the minors, if you're in that spot. Yeah, that's but if a you're a major leaguer, you recognize that there are 162 games, and it's just a different perspective. Your thoughts are welcome. 314-399-9646, Air Comfort Service text line. And watch and participate in the chat on YouTube. Uh, that is the 101 ESPN YouTube channel. This program is Balloon Party on 101 ESPN.
This is Action Jackson with a Sports Center update, driven by Johnny Landoff Chevrolet and Johnny Landoff Autoplex. The Cardinals lose yesterday the Phillies' final score of four to three. Off day today, then they head out to the desert to take on the Arizona Diamondbacks tomorrow. But the Blues win last night, final score of five to two over the Chicago Blackhawks. The Blues will play again tomorrow night, taking on the Carolina Hurricanes. You can catch that game right here on the home of the Blues, 101 ESPN. Pre-game at 6 p.m. Puck drop at seven. And last night, the Nets defeat the Raptors 106. To 102, Dennis Schroeder with 21 points. That was another Sports Center update driven by Johnny Landoff. Find new roads and shop 24 7 at Landoff.com and LandoffAutoplex.com. Are you kidding me? You know, I, I, I think I speak for most of St. Louis area sports fans when they appreciate what was that update I just caught? Uh, Nets Raptors. Good and tug. Dennis Schroeder with 21 points. The Nets Raptors score update. But why not head down to Augusta National as the players are out on the course and just tell us who's leading and maybe a tea time for Eldrick Tiger Woods. Mm. Do you feel like as far as interest level, if you were to run the analytics, that there's more in in that leaderboard or in the Nets and Raptors outcome? So the day that I've been presented is actually, it skews much more Brooklyn, Toronto, uh, especially when it comes to hoop rock. Now, give oh, I want you. To, the people collecting this data are from the the Piddles Corp. And uh, yeah, I knew you had a corp. Yeah, yeah, it was soon to go public. Uh, and so maybe there, maybe it's some biased data, but it's just the data that was handed to me. Okay. Well, since we got the Nets Raptors score, yeah, Dennis uh, Schroeder, twenty one points. I'll let uh, you know that uh, your leaders at Augusta very early, uh, Roger. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau, one under. That's who I was texting with Jay Delsing last night. I was in this master's auction, and I was texting him for information, and he had to be like, why is this guy bothering me? <laughs> hey, Jay, does Cam Young hit a draw or a fade? <laughs> it's a draw, of course. Right-hand draw. I know, but he had a T7 last year, and uh, my syndicate, we were trying to figure out if we should bid on him or not. And uh, and then Jay goes and looks at video. He goes, it's a fade, but don't worry about it. He's just going to bomb his irons anyway. Uh, Bryson's one under. And he, but he kept talking up Bryson. So if Bryson wins, Jay Delson called it. Uh, Taylor Moore, Eric Van Royen, and perhaps the greatest Masters champion of them all has just taken the lead all by himself. Danny Willett, fresh off of shoulder surgery, is two under par through three. Mm, man. Danny Willett always thankful for Jordan Spieth, seven on number 12. Jackson, what else do we have on this Thursday throwdown? Well, let's stay in Augusta, Tim. Oh. I like staying in Augusta. Love talking uh, Masters on Masters Yeah, your, your grandfather was uh, one of the founding members. <laughs> yep, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> totally. All right, uh, how do you think the poor weather going on right now will affect the players in the tournament in general? Also, more in the weeds on business, but big picture. Do you think the live PGA situation is one that's still in its infancy? Or you think a resolution is soon to come? Oh, wow. Two different questions all under the umbrella of one. That's why the Thursday throwdown is a tradition unlike any other. Uh, the weather is absolutely material. Uh, I'm known as one of the best ball strikers in St. Louis. But one of the criticisms that uh, that, that I know Brandel Chambly has had with my game is that I hit the ball too high and therefore I'm susceptible to the hawk. Mm -hmm. I call it the wind most people in the industry call it the hawk and the hawk will be up today at augusta national even when uh, the course is soft from the precipitation and uh, that's going to wreak havoc on the players uh, furthermore from a tiger wood standpoint teeing off late today he's probably not going to get all 18 holes in and that means tiger is going to have to walk that hilly terrain and perhaps play as many as 27 holes on friday all while trying to keep that cut streak alive that's going to make it awfully challenging for him. Do these conditions open it up to a Zach Johnson 2007 set of circumstances, or does it benefit someone like Scotty Scheffler even more with that ball striking advantage? Well, it's going to be fun to find out over the next 72 hours. Uh, live from Augusta. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and as far as the live PGA thing, no, absolute infancy. Uh, they keep talking about all the meetings they're having. I've been part of businesses that had a lot of meetings, and those ones weren't necessarily the ones that were close to accomplishing things. Well, I don't know what you're talking about there. Right. So, uh, yeah, uh, I don't think it's anything close 
to a resolution. Yeah. I don't think it's anything close to a resolution. I think the PGA Tour uh, went out and raised a bunch of capital to try to stave off Yasser al Ramayan and the piff of Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I just think I think if, if they were in such great terms, why was John Rahm going? Oh, okay, I'll go over there now. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You're not I, gonna be poaching people when you're about to get a deal done. <laughs> it's it's like so obvious. But hey, you know what? They're they're all together this weekend, Jackson, in the, amongst the dogwoods and pines. Yeah, that's kind of why I brought it up because yeah, there will be some some congregating. I just think it's such a shame because golf is in such a great place right now with people playing like crazy, uh, you know, after the pandemic where people have real golf boom coming up, it's getting more casual, more and more people are getting into it and it's great and people want to watch pro golf, but you're not, no matter what, unless you're watching a major tournament, you're not seeing all of the best players in one tournament. It just stinks. It'd be such a great opportunity to really capture this moment in golf and bring fans in for a lifetime. And uh, you have two separate leagues and it's just not the same. It sucks. Well, for the next four days, we will get to see them play, and uh, I would imagine you will have at least one uh, tour versus live showdown matchup that will be glamorous, and maybe it'll be Tiger and Phil in the final pairing on Sunday. Oh my God! <laughs> oh, I don't know if I could handle that. <laughs> that would be. T- I would just sit on my couch all day and watch it every second, rewind. It could be Danny Willett against Bryson, and I'll be sitting on my couch all day Sunday. For sure. And I let uh, my wife know that at uh, a dinner that she enjoyed last Sunday. I said, "Hey, I know that this is your favorite time of year, but uh, Thursday through Sunday, I'm going to be uh, not available." Indisposed, I always call it. Yeah. And it's just a, it's a thing that a wife just loves, especially if you have two young children. <laughs> to say, and, you're, and your husband's in the basement watching golf for four days. It's just like, oh, how was I so lucky to find him? <laughs> Jackson, it's uh, 1045 in St. Louis. This time check brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers. We have one final segment of uh, Balloon Party today. Then you have BK and Ferrario coming your way. This program is Balloon Party on 101 ESPN. James Carlton of the Carlton State Farm Insurance Agency is my insurance agent, and I would love for him to become your insurance agent as well, because as soon as you make the switch, number one, they're going to do all the paperwork for you, so you don't have to worry about handling any of that. But on top of that, you are now going to truly be working with one of the best customer service operations I have worked with in my lifetime. I am so thrilled that I made the switch to James and his team in 2019. And just this week when we ran into issues with uh, one of our cars uh, and James' staff took care of it super quick, fast, in a hurry, it was another illustration of the customer service they provide. And I was like texting him at 645 in the evening and he was getting right back to me. It's just the way that they work. Uh, See this, uh, one of the 363 five-star reviews on Google. We switched our home and auto to James Carl and due to a real lack of communication from our prior agent. It's been a great experience. James and his staff are quick to respond to emails, texts, or phone calls, and the transition's been incredible. That's from Paul Nobby on Google. You can add your name to that list of people having great experiences with James Carlton of the Carlton State Farm Insurance Agency. Just go to carltoninsurance.net or call 314-961-4800. James Carlton, if your insurance costs a leg and an arm, call James Carlton State Farm.
Welcome back. It's Balloon Party 101 ESPN. Opened the program with the news that O.J. Simpson has died at the age of 76 from cancer. Uh, I'm sure more on that throughout the day here on 101 ESPN. And uh, they got underway later today because of weather at Augusta National. Your leader, I'm sure someone everybody had picked to win, Danny Willett. Mm. He's uh, two under par, Jackson. Fast champ. Uh, in the early going. Uh, if you want to take Danny Willett, uh, I will take the field. So I'm giving you the leader. Yeah, I was uh, I was watching on YouTube last night, Tim, video of uh, like Tiger's top 10 moments at the Masters. And the fact that he won the Masters in 97 at 21 years old by 12 strokes is like, su like that's such a feat that I just don't think could ever be done. It's crazy, crazy. I think there is a chance, I don't know if it would be this year, but nobody's playing better, that you could have a dominant win by Scotty Scheffler, but even a dominant win, the idea of it being double digits would be... Oh, I mean, that's that's unheard of. It's, 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 Tiger was already playing the new game in 97, and plenty of guys who, you know, were about done were playing in 97, and you saw how the results played out with somebody of his... Uh, distance ability. Jackson, do you have a final question on the Thursday throwdown before we hand it off to BK and Ferrari? I do, but I have some things, some thoughts that have come to my mind. Back on the Nets and Raptors. No, I just I, I just want to clear quickly and then I'll get to my last question. Oh, okay. Uh, we were talking about the Astros earlier. And, sure, uh, the very detailed discussion on the Astros. Do you prefer, like, the uniforms that they would wear, like, in the mid to early 2000s with, like, the red and the yellow as opposed to, like, the newer orange and blue look? When I think of the Astros and their uniforms, I actually think of what I grew up with in the 80s. And I uh, think they were the same thing at home as they did on the road. Yeah, like the sunrise like, yeah. gradient thing. Yeah, yeah that was real. That's, that's the real old school look. Yeah. And then they rebranded again to the kind of the, uh, the Jeff Bagwells. Yeah. And, uh, and now they're in the, the modern era. The Carlos Correa's, I'll call them. Nice. Um, even though he's not on the team anymore. Sure, it's nice though. Do you, I prefer the nice newer ones personally. I don't, the twins. I don't really love the uh, the ones when they used to play in the NL Central when there were six teams in the NL Central for whatever reason. It's very odd. No, it's a pressing question, and I'm glad we got to it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I just uh, I, I I was in my mind, and I wanted to ask. All right, final question for you. Horror movie remakes are a popular trend as of right now. You know what? This little cinephile doesn't mind it. However, a popular trend in sports. Is athletes podcast? Do you think in yeah, general had, that is that is going on? Yeah, yeah. Do you Michael th Porter Jr. with Lana Rhodes. That one, obviously, the Kelsey brothers have a very famous one. Draymond Green has a very famous one. Do you think in general these podcasts or athletes having more of a voice is a positive in sports discourse? Also, which former or current STL athletes or athlete combos would you most want to see start a podcast? Oh wow, what a wonderful little kicker there. I like I like the little kicker. I I like it. Me too. Like I'm it. a fan. You know what I found, and this is kind of going on right now with the Otani news that his interpreter is facing federal charges, is it e even when even when actual news breaks, now it's like, oh, well, he's just taking the fall, or, you know, it's a cover-up, yeah. which I, I do believe I mentioned what I thought would happen uh, a couple of weeks ago when the story was going on, that the narrative's already formed. So what it allows for is an athlete to set the record straight. Yeah. But what it's a combination of fascinates me and saddens me is even when the athlete attempts to set the record straight, many people, if not the majority of people, still don't believe it and then feel like they're just doth protesting too much. Right. And so in some kind of ideal set of circumstances, it would allow for athletes to uh, speak with more detail to set records straight or provide context to a situation to help inform fans. But for whatever reason, guy on Twitter has more credibility than guy who actually played the game. Yeah, right. And people just choose to believe what they want to believe. And if something does not match the conspiracy theory, then it must be uh, a cover-up. Yeah, I, it's it's. I do a little game, Tim, when I see clips of uh, athlete podcasts on social media, and uh, I'll see it. The person might have a, what might be viewed as a controversial take, but an opinion of their own, an opinion formed on someone who's played the game or is currently playing the game, and I play. 
what do I think the comment section will tell them that he's wrong about, even though he plays the sport? Oh, nice. Yeah. And so the other day, like Alex Caruso of the Chicago Bulls was talking about how he enjoys the NBA product more than the college basketball product. And everyone in the comments telling him how wrong he is that college basketball is better. And well, he wouldn't know. Right. Of course, he didn't play both. You know, he has no idea what the games look like. And so, yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's just a byproduct of confirmation bias. Everyone On to, your, to uh, your kicker yeah. uh, question. Wow, that's a combination. Yeah, and it can be you could cross sports. Oh, I know. I mean, that's what I'm. That's what I'm doing. I've already got. God, I'm trying to think of like a great cardinal one. Mm -hmm. I'm pairing them with Kelly Chase, and I'm trying to think of who who were. Who are going with from the Cardinals side? So, like, I'm inclined to go with Adam Wainwright, but I don't think pairing Chase with Wainwright allows both of them to spread their wings and fly together. I think they right. would want to fly different directions. They run two different kind of offenses. Right, they do. And that doesn't make one offense right and one wrong. We can get into the end zone. It just is going to be with a different style. And that's okay, Some Jackson. like the air raid, some like the West Coast style. It's my credo. Um, God, what Cardinal would be great. That's not including Wainwright because if we're, if we're trying to pair him up with Chaser, I think John Lackey would be outstanding. Oh, wow. <laughs> I think that, that also is a different offense. I've got three offenses <laughs> running. I think John Lackey in general. It's just I'd like to hear more. Yeah. Uh, I love John Lackey. See, I'm going to go into the text inbox and see what they're saying on this one. Steve Klein. Freeze. Oh, yeah. Ice man. Freeze. You know, it would be great if Pat Maroon and David Freeze <laughs> Yeah, right. That, there's a, there's a, that would be outstanding. I'd love to hear that. <laughs> you know, I'll be driving along to my iTunes. Right. And it'll just pop up, and I'll go, why the hell haven't we released this? It's really, really good. And you've listened to it. I have. I have. I'm like one of the few people. But now at this point, like, I mean, the, the, you know, Freeze has had like two kids since then. Maroon's won two cups since then. Right, I've right. had a kid since then. I mean, I'm not ashamed of anything I said, but maybe Freeze will be like, yeah, I said that in 2020 when we were all like locked up. You know, I mm -hmm. didn't. I didn't know you were going to play this. Now I got to answer for the fact that we're talking about, I don't know what they were talking about, like some playing video games at Mike Trout's house. And I think people were having a nice evening. Yeah, right. But either way, that's a nice play on Freeze. Lance Lynn, whoever sent that in from the 636. Really, him and Lackey might be a real good one-two yeah. combo right there. Call it positive thoughts. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Moving Enjoying on quickly. Enjoying the game. Yeah, yeah. Not letting things resonate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Chris Long, Jackson. Oh, wow. Guy. He uh, actually interviewed Wayno uh, a couple of years ago, and it was a really great interview. It was outstanding. Uh, Randy Carricker got mentioned as uh, Chris Long and Randy Carricker. Was that right? had a long relationship, and uh, and 101 ESPN got a shout out. But Wayno and uh, C. Long did an interview. It was great. It was really great. It was right after the, it was the Albert and Yadi year. Uh, Tim, Freeze and Maroon would be an amazing podcast. You can call it the Hometown <laughs> Heroes podcast. I can't tell if well, that's a level. Well, you'd be including that, though. Well, I mean, I think if you're ranking the importance to St. Louis sports, both Freeze and Maroon would acknowledge they're just fighting for second place. Yeah, broadcast hero Tim McCurney. Sure, absolutely. Uh, I like your question. Okay. I like the idea, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I think I just put it together and see what people think. And I don't know. I think there's a lot you could cross sports and cross eras, and I think there's a lot of great info that could come out in, in some of those pods and great entertainment. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I like the athlete podcast. Me too, man. I mean, I don't really have, you know, I mean, I know some St. Louisans have adopted the Chiefs, but uh, I don't really have a strong feeling. With it, but I would look forward to watching Jason and Travis Kelsey. It was just entertainment. Highly know? recommend their newest episode with Little Dicky. Really oh, funny. Right? Really funny. Jackson really with good the stuff. recommendation, podcast recommendation. BK and Ferrario coming up next for Jackson Burkadam. Tim McKernan, this program has been called Balloon Party, driven by Munganess, St. Louis Acura, Munganess, Burkhardt, Alton Toyota on 101 ESPN and the 101 ESPN YouTube channel.